It's always neat seeing Obi-Wan Kenobi and other stuff other than Star Wars. Seeing Ewan McGregor, hearing him in his Scottish voice in this movie, Train Spotting, that was requested by Bobby on my Patreon. It was kind of cool. It was kind of cool seeing a young Ewan McGregor. And on this episode of Movie Breakdowns, I'm going to talk about the movie Train Spotting for the year 1996. What's up, world? Welcome to another episode of Movie Breakdowns. I'm your host, Ali Zaka. And before I get started as a review, let me do let me know. We put in the comments below and I get to it as best I can. Also, the Patreon, Patreon slash Ali Zaka for $2 a month. You get the review out way before it comes on Facebook and YouTube. You get it front before everybody else gets it. Also, you get comment section, description, talking points on there that you can talk about or anything, discussions. And you also get sometimes you get some movie reactions that I might sit and put myself recording. Like if I'm sitting down watching the movie, you might get some, some reactions to the movie. Now, let's go into today's episode of train spotting from the year 2000 sorry 1996 i want to say 2000 so bad for this movie i think the reason why because i was googling and i saw there's a sequel to this movie that came out 2017 i could be wrong but anyway there's a sequel to this movie but that's not the movie we're talking about we're talking about this one from 1996 train spotting and what is train spotting about well Hugh mcgregor plays a character who is caught up in the drug life. He's caught up in the drug life, living his life daily through drugs, and, and he's trying to get out after a issue that caused him to really, really, really revaluate his whole life. He tried to get himself out of the life, but he has friends who doesn't want to quit the life, and they bring him back in for one last hit slash, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? Not like a, I guess a hit in two different ways. Like, they're trying to make a, make a way to find like one last big cash out. I don't know what else to say it. But Ewan, Ewan McGregor's character really got to gotta figure out if he wants to, you know, go with his friends and do this one last hit or stay the life of a clean man. And that's pretty much what Train Spotting is. The things that I like, the acting in this movie. I really did love the acting. The acting was great. I think everybody gave 110% in this movie. Like, the character was believable. The things they did, the way they reacted. One character where you're like, you're kind of terrified. He's like a loose cannon, kind of crazy. Like, when he went off on, on the movie, you felt like he went off and he was dangerous. And everybody else who interacted with him might not survive that night. Like, I love the way the actors gave it 110 percent into this movie i like i get i love it i love the way they did that good job for them the visuals in this movie is kind of neat the visuals in this movie different camera angle camera tricks sometimes a little over the top other times it's like okay this is perfectly perfectly in the world of what's going on here the dude is going through withdrawals right now so he's losing his mind and it makes sense that there's a baby on the roof crawling and it turns his head and you're like yeah. But at the same time, that same scene doesn't, no reason it's so effective because the scene prior to that, or a couple of scenes prior to that, when it deals with a baby, you're like, that is tragic. And the camera work was great in this movie. The costume and makeup design in this movie was also great. Like, the way characters looked in certain scenes and, and the way they, like, if it was a bloody scene, they blood, like, it was some good work here. So good work from the camera angles to the costume and makeup design in this movie, the visuals in this movie. That was solid. I thought this movie did a good job giving you different things and different camera works. The director, i pull up my iPad here, Danny Boyle did a good job with some of the camera angle, camera tricks in this movie and how you want the movie be laid out. I think the cast, like I said, is great. The music... Actually, the song A Perfect Day was played in this movie and sometimes licensed music just like throws in the background to do like a montage scene or a scene something's going on, but it's a perfect day plays during the scene in this movie, which is ironic to what's going on on the screen. I thought it was great and the song, which I never thought I expected to hear in this movie, was playing and I was like, I love this song. It's a perfect day, glad I got to spend it with you. Oh, such a perfect day you keep me hanging on like I love that song I used to listen to it thanks to the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 3 commercial that happened years ago so here in this movie and this song comes on I'm singing it with the song <laughs> kid you not but the scene that was going on you're like man that sucks I hope he survives and when he does you're like good for him don't do that stuff again come on bro 
I, I, the little things in this movie I like. I love the stuff in this movie. I love the way this movie, to me this movie was a cool movie. I enjoyed it. Now, what I dislike was some of the pacing of it. This movie, at one point I'm watching it, I'm just like, okay, we're 10 minutes in, we haven't hit anything yet, we're just learning about what's going on. Okay, 20 minutes in, we're learning about what's going on. Okay, 30 minutes in, we're learning about what's going on. Okay, 40 minutes, alright, now we're getting to the part where we're like, this is now becoming an issue, and now this is showing up. Now we're seeing the exact issue of the movie, and what, what the movie really entails. Like, the first 40 minutes was kind of like just their life and it was almost like a movie that was kind of like Seinfeld, a movie really about nothing. Like yes it's about the drug and the issue but to me it was almost as if we're just watching these characters do these things and live their life like a slice of life movie that boy, a bunch of drug addicts and you know eventually they're gonna just go spiral out. That's what I thought was gonna happen I'm glad the movie kind of took a turn around the 40 minute mark around the hour mark I believe it's the hour mark where you were where you actually like picks back up and you're like ah oh, shoot he couldn't get away he followed him and now he's at his place and then you know all right so we're here now how you gonna get away from them oh no look another one showed up okay well how he's gonna get, get away from this guy oh now he's gonna do this I'm like oh so this movie's gonna end on a bad note where where the character is not, you know, the main protagonist you're following is not going to win. Like, you're kind of like, I want to see him overcome this issue, overcome these challenges, and you're not going to see that in this movie. And that's what I thought was going to happen. I actually have it. The movie didn't take that turn. So at the end of the movie, when I take you to the edge of my seat, I actually felt, felt a win. I felt, I felt relief. I felt like, yeah, I felt the writer did a good job in the movie where, in the book, I didn't read the book, but it's based off a novel where, like, the main character, your protagonist, you've been following, who's been going through all this stuff, who've been down and, and low and gets out, like, it's it's a happy ending. And I actually feel, felt good that this movie had a happy ending to it. Like, I'm going to be really sad if it didn't. Because <laughs> all the stuff you're witnessing in this movie, and you're like, dude, I'm glad it turned out okay. So my only dislike was kind of the pacing of the movie, how long it took for it, certain things to happen, and like you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And then you're like, ah, oh, here we go. The end of you know act one, the end of act two, and now I feel like in the middle of act two is where we finally get in the okay, here it is, this is what it is about. Here is come the the not the plot, but the not tension. What's the word I'm looking for that moves the story along, that moves it, moves it going? I can't think of the word right now. It's escaping me. But not the issue. It's another word, and I can't think of it right now. It's, it's a word that's like dealing with not tension, but what brings tension to it, that brings the story to move forward. And I, finally, I feel like we finally got there around an hour, 50 minutes, an hour mark. I was like, okay. Cool. Here we are. Now you find a spot where like there's now tension. There's now an issue that's now has to resolve a problem for the character. The conflict. The conflict in this movie. I finally thought we could finally got to it. Now you can argue that there was conflict early on. You can argue the conflict with it with the uh, overdose scene. You can argue about that. The conflict with this issue. You can argue about that. But for our main protagonist, that really feel like he had somebody against. Finally didn't show up to like that. 40 minutes to the hour mark. We're like 40 to 20 minutes between there. So I was like, okay, here we go. Because he got clean. He trying to get himself better. For a while, I thought the conflict was going to be with him and his fake high school girlfriend from the movie Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Quote that movie. But his high school girlfriend, the girl, he didn't know that was a high schooler. But she was in a club. So I was like, oh, this turned into a romance movie. But it's not a romance movie. It's just a scene that happens for. Don't know why. Not necessary at all, but it is what it is. Not really a fan of that scene, but I guess it just really shows that our main character is really just going through a spiral of like just bad mistake at the bad mistake at the bad mistake because he needs another hit per se. So I get it, and then all this kind of leads to him getting, you know, get a better lifestyle for himself, but his friends come back and try to pull him back into the life. Well, I don't know. I thought this movie was good. I thought the movie was good. I had fun time with this movie. And did I watch it again? Maybe not. I don't know. But I had a good time with this one. For sure. Definitely for sure.
Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the cast, directors, writers. So, this movie is directed by Danny Boyle. This movie is an hour and 33 minutes long. It's rated R. Writers is, I might say his name, person, person name up, but Irvin Welsh, who wrote the book, and then John Hodge, who wrote the screenplay. As far as the box office here, and let's see... So, I'm not sure how much money this is, but the budget was estimated as 1,500,000 pounds and it grossed worldwide $16 million. So, I don't know how much the pounds is compared to $16 million. I feel like $16 million is definitely more than, more than enough when it comes to the pounds. And sorry for my, fr for my um, friends overseas if I'm screwing that up, but I feel like they did make their money back. I feel like they did. In the cast here, you have Ewan McGregor who plays Renton. Renton was our protagonist that, that Ewan McGregor played. And you're the guy that's fought, this person you're following his story and figuring out you know, what he's doing and seeing what's going on. To me, he just seemed like an average dude who just going through life and just living life. But he wanted to get his next hit, wanted to get his next high. And he kept messing up and kind of spiraling out of control. And then he tried to get out, but his friend tried to bring him back in. He's just like an average dude. Yet, yeah, Ewan Bremer, who plays Spud. Spud was a, like was a eccentric kind of guy. He was definitely odd, um, probably on the spectrum. But I feel like the movie does say that he, like he's on it. Like his reaction like that is kind of like sure like he's on the spectrum a little bit, but he still knows what's going on. He's still aware of stuff, but he's you know, just he's on the spectrum. He's autistic, I believe, and that's the kind of character you give up. But like, he's just following people because that's that's his friends. Or he was so into the drugs that his mind got messed up. One or two things. I don't know which one it is, but to me, he's like a character who was on the spectrum, who just kind of hang out. Like these are my friends, so I just want to follow them. I thought he did a good job. I thought I thought Edwin Bremer did a good job being Spud and adding a, a very comedic vibe sometimes to the movie. Then you had Johnny Lee Miller who plays Sick Boy. So Sick Boy was kind of a dude who like was a con artist who kind of found a way to make money as well. He also was like a dude trying to play around, get money, and kind of screw over his friends. And Hugh McGregor's like this dude I really don't like. But the really main dude is Robert Carlyle who played Bagby or Bigby. Horrible dude, terrifying. Like dude was like a dude ran from the cops. He's he's an outlaw and loose cannon. Don't care what it was, he'll go off on anybody because he wants to start a fight with somebody. And you know, like hanging around him, he was an issue. And you didn't know how the movie was gonna play out until it happens in the movie. And then you have Kevin McKinn who played Tommy. I thought he did a good job as well. He was the kind of a guy who was like. He, like, he was like staying out of it and then he finds him getting on the drugs as well later in the movie. I thought he did a good job in the first couple of halves of the movie there. Kelly McDonald who played Diane, I thought the movie would be more about her. I thought that she would be more of an integral part in the movie um, for reading one of the uh, synopsis of the movie. She wasn't. She was, she was there for like maybe screen time in 10 minutes probably maybe less than that I don't know I just thought she'd be a bigger part of this movie but she wasn't and that kind of sucks I've been like interesting dynamic to see how that movie how it played out and like she tried to trap trap McGregor and he was like I'm not going to be trapped but the cast was great I definitely enjoyed the cast of this movie I thought the cast did a great job bringing it to life and all the things that was going on solid any other thoughts Nah, the music I talked about, I felt like the music was solid. I enjoyed it. It was a perfect day being played in this movie. Movie, which, by the way, Perfect Day is by Lou Reed. That's who sings it. Lou Reed, who plays Perfect Day, who sings Perfect Day. I thought it was a great job like to hear that song in this movie. And there's a bunch of other songs in this movie that played in the background. And for the most part, it didn't really bother me hearing the licensed music. And then the... Costume design, the color makeup for this movie was great. I thought it was solid. The visuals of the movie was, was fun to watch and see. It was interesting. I thought the visuals was cool. Yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. The only thing I didn't really like was the pacing of it. I thought the movie's paced a little slow and 
and suddenly the conflict came in a little later than what it needs to be. Like I thought the conflict should came a little bit more. And you can argue that it did come. It was more self-inflicting conflict. But I just wonder like, okay, he was trying to get something better than like what's gonna happen next. Like he's getting out the life and then all of a sudden what's the next conflict and it then it comes back in. And he almost like, man, well he's ruined again and he doesn't get ruined. So I do I do enjoy the conflict, but it just came a lot later than I really expected it. Especially from reading the synopsis of this movie. Any other thoughts besides that? Mm-mm. Is this a Friday night movie? Yeah, it's a Friday night movie. Watch your friends and family. Friends and family who are adults, older, because rated R. But I think I think it will start off slow, so you guys will really have to pay, pay attention to it and stay with it. But I think throughout the middle of the movie, it will be a good movie for everybody to sit down and watch. In grading time, I'm going to grade the movie Train Spotting from the year... 2000, I keep wanting to say 2000 so bad, maybe because it's the sequel I'm thinking of, but Train Spotting from the year 1996. I'm going to give this movie a solid B. This movie gets a B for me, an 85%. Thought I did a good job. I had fun with this movie. The IMDb gives this movie 8.1 out of 10, so that's a B minus. And Rotten Tomatoes give this movie a 91% from the critics and the audience gives this movie a 93%. So that is a A- minus from both Rotten Tomatoes and for audience and critics. So yeah, this movie is a good movie. I think it's solid. So if you guys seen the movie Train Spotting from 1996, what did you think? Please put in the comment section below on that. See you guys next episode of Movie Breakdowns and keep being awesome. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate that. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. If there's a review you want me to watch or do, let me know. Please put it in the comment section below this video. Also, you can watch the last episode of Movie Breakdowns. It's right there. Just gotta click on it and you'll be able to watch it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Love y'all. And keep being awesome.